I want to thank you for joining us once again as we continue our study of Joseph's life found in the end of the book of Genesis. So let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us to open up your word, to hear you speak, and to respond accordingly. God, I pray that you would give us wisdom as we look at what you have to say. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we find ourselves in Genesis 45. And once again, it's important that you read the chapter before you listen to the remainder of this video. So if you haven't done that yet, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do it right now. Okay, let's go. Genesis 45. We have been working up to this build for a while where there has been almost, I wouldn't say cat and mouse game going on between Joseph and his brothers, but... Um, Joseph has been playing around a little bit with his brothers, testing them and trying to see where their true intentions were. And um, we don't know exactly the extent of the emotions that Joseph was going through when he was doing those things or his intentions. But um, we come to chapter 45. And if you remember, at the end of chapter 44, Judah has said that he will take the place of Benjamin, that he will sacrifice himself, if you will, so that Benjamin can be freed um, from this crime, even though Benjamin didn't commit it, and, um, and neither did Judah. And this is almost too much for Joseph to take. So as we pick up in 45, Joseph is overcome, asks everybody to leave except for his brothers. And it's at this moment that he reveals who he is to his brothers. There is, um, I'm sure, shock in um, his brother's reaction, there is weeping, there is um, even fear of them probably wondering what's about to happen to us. Um, but through all that, what I want you to really see in this chapter, the thing that I really want to hone in on is Joseph's forgiveness of his brothers. Here's the moment where he reveals to them who he was and he doesn't belittle what they did he doesn't excuse it but what he says is that you have nothing to worry about God was in this God used this and now I've been able to save so many including you all and he has forgiven them in fact he continually reassures them that they don't have anything to fear or worry about because he has forgiven them and this is a tremendous testimony of forgiveness because what the brothers did to Joseph was terrible. They beat him. They threw him into a pit in the hopes of really killing him and were planning to kill him and instead sold him into slavery, leaving him for dead because they think he's dead at this point. And that is the guilt and shame that they've been carrying with them all this time. And when they find out that this government official is Joseph, they're probably really worried about their life and what's going to happen. And, oh, I'm going to pay for all the things I've done, the things that I've done to Joseph. It's, it's coming to a head. But that's not what happens. And Joseph continually reassures them that he loves them. He cries over them. He hugs them. He's not playing a game. He's not showing a, a show for anybody, he is just loving them. And if you look at his response, you will notice a continual repetition of God in his dealings with his brothers. Joseph emphasized how God had worked through this and what God was doing and what God was doing within his own heart and within his own life. And as we look at forgiveness, I believe that this is very key and very important. That usually our tendency in the flesh is to look at ourselves and to look at the things done to us. And we cannot get over that. We can only see the injustices that have been done to us. We can only see the, the bad things that have happened to us. And it, because of this, we focus in on that. It makes it very hard to forgive. But here you see Joseph doing something differently. Instead of focusing on himself, he focuses on God 
and what God has done and what God is doing through him. And so I believe that's very important as we look at forgiveness, that we see the importance of getting our eyes off of ourself and putting it on God and what God is doing. Now, God didn't make the brothers act that way. He was just able to use what the brothers did for his glory and for Joseph's good. Also, again, I want to stress that Joseph didn't say, well, what you did wasn't a big deal. Oh, it doesn't really matter. And he didn't say what you did was right. He just has, for lack of a better term, moved on. He's forgiven them for what they've done, looked to God, found peace and purpose in what is God is accomplishing in his life now, and has forgiven his brothers. It's a beautiful picture of forgiveness, but it's not the best picture of forgiveness. Perfect forgiveness was seen on the cross, where Jesus willingly died for our sins. This is a picture of forgiveness. That even though we had wronged God, even though we had done terrible things, we had sinned, we had rebelled against God. He loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross to take the punishment for those sins, offering forgiveness instead of <laughs> wrath. That is a complete picture of forgiveness because Jesus had done nothing wrong. God had done nothing wrong. And yet, he forgave us. And we have forgiveness because of the cross. This is something that we must remember. That we have been forgiven much. And if we've been forgiven much, then we must also extend forgiveness out to others. If we're recipients of grace, we must be a um, a distributor of grace in other people's lives. It is something that is so easily said and yet difficult to do. And so I want to encourage you to search your heart and see if there is any unforgiveness there that needs to be dealt with. Ask God to reveal it. Then also, through God's grace, ask God the power to forgive whoever you need to forgive. To take your eyes off of them. To put your eyes on Christ. It'll make all the difference in the world. Joseph had lived life freed because he had not been entangled by bitterness and unforgiveness. We know that because of this chapter. So I encourage you, take that time to spend with God and see if there's anything that you need to deal with, any unforgiveness in your heart that you need to go make right. So that concludes this lesson. Next week, we have a great reunion that takes place between Jacob and Joseph. But that's next week. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love and your great mercy that was demonstrated on the cross. We thank you that we have forgiveness of sins. Lord, that we don't have to bear the guilt or shame of our sin because of what you did on the cross. And God, I pray that as you have forgiven us, so we would forgive others. I pray, Lord, that we would not take and hold on to the grace that has been given to us and try to... Um, Hold on to it so that we don't extend it to others. I pray, Lord, that we would, like you, extend grace to those that even have wronged us. Help us to keep our eyes off of ourselves. And instead, may our eyes be focused on you and what you are doing and how you're working through us. Lord, I thank you for your incredible love and your incredible grace. And I pray that you continue to be with us and strengthen and guide us. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, I want to thank you for joining us. I hope to see you next week as we talk about that great reunion between Jacob and Joseph. Until that time, have a wonderful day.